the second reading is about Saint Paul who is rejected. That is from Second Corinthians chapter 12 verse 7 onwards. Let us read that passage and reflect about it. And Second Corinthians chapter 12 verse 7, Saint Paul is Saint Paul is speaking about a thorn in the flesh. For the last 2000 years, there are so many scholars, biblical scholars and theologians, they were reflecting what is this thorn in the flesh of St. Paul. Unfortunately, he did not explain what was the thorn, but there are, there are some clues. There are some, um, some clues we can get it from the Bible to show what exactly the thorn he had in his flesh. So we are going to reflect about this thorn of St. Paul. And St. Paul calls this thorn in the flesh as a messenger of Satan. Something connected to Satan. A tormentation from Satan. So that is what St. Paul calls it. Let's read. Even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. A messenger of Satan is in me, in my body, a thorn in my flesh. It is tormenting me to keep me from being too elated. Now, if you want to know the, the background of this, why did St. Paul speak like this? If you really want to know, then you, you may have to read just before this Bible passage, the verses before this. The Bible word, word of, uh, the words of God just before this word of God. Then you will understand St. Paul is exalting himself. He is talking too much about himself. He is boasting about himself. He is not just boasting, but there is a reason why he boasted. He is not a boasting, but he was speaking the truth. So there is a reason. Let us read from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 onwards. Then we will understand. It is necessary to boast, he says. It is necessary to boast. In my case, it is necessary to boast now. That is what St. Paul says. Nothing is to be gained by it. But I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. Then verse 2. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. But God knows. See, he's speaking about himself. He had an in supernatural revelation. He had a supernatural encounter with God in heaven. He was taken to heaven and he had an encounter with God. And he's talking about it. St. Paul is talking about it. And why did he speak like this? Because there is a background. And the background is this. All those who were in Corinthians, they were not happy with St. Paul. They started gossiping against St. Paul. They said, St. Paul is a murderer. Because before his conversion, he killed so many Christians. And after conversion, he, though he repented, he followed Christ radically. He left all his fame and name and authority and he came out for Jesus. But some people did not accept him. They are still carrying his past sins, which he repented. There are many people like this. There are so many of our friends and family members and relatives, even husband, even wife. They have done mistakes in the past and they have gone for confession and repented and got absolution. But the husband has not forgotten the sin. Wife has not forgotten the sin, though God has forgotten the sin. The, though God has forgiven their sin. Some wives and some husbands have got this problem. Whenever they are angry, they, they bring back the old some age old sins which husband happened to by mistake do and they bring it out and accuse the husband accuse the wife hundred years ago you did this and and you know with all the details and minute timing they will give and explain and say this is what you did and even the husband must have already forgotten this even god has forgotten this but still she will remember it and this is how many people so here, this poor St. Paul, though he had committed murder, of course it's a very serious crime. He killed Christians, but God touched him. God changed him. God made him an apostle. But some people are not accepting him because of his past. 
my brothers and sisters if god has anointed and appointed a person accept him as he is not as he was but as he is don't bring back the past sins because god has forgiven them the same way if your husband has already suppose if your husband or wife were into wrong relationship and then they came to know what was that was very serious and it was wrong and they repented they cried they asked forgiveness in front of you they went for confession and they got absolution from the priest of the absolution from god and now they are starting a new life don't ever bring back the old sins god will not tolerate this because god has removed it god has forgiven it and god has washed away that sin then why are you bringing it back what is not in his account why are you bringing into his account this is not good praise the lord so there are many people who have these tendencies please do not remember the past sins but forgive them unconditionally remembering not forgetting that the lord has already forgiven them if god has forgiven them who are we to judge them if god has forgiven them who are we to carry the sins they have committed we have our own sins to carry why do you want to carry someone else sins too so if they have committed sin jesus will carry the sin praise the lord so the saint paul had committed sin he was a murderer before conversion and now he is a changed person he is an apostle he is a child of god he is preaching the gospel but some corinthians some people in corinthians corinth they did not accept him they went on gossiping against him saying you know he killed many people he was attacking the christians he was destroying the families of christians and now he's come to preach the gospel to us why should we accept him and he's not an apostle jesus has got 12 apostles how come he is an apostle so there were so many gossips against saint paul and saint paul mentioned about them saint paul mentioned in the same passage he spoke about them and said they are false false prophets these people who are speaking to you wrong things about me and gossiping against me they are messengers of satan don't listen to them so this is the uh, background of this word of god and that is why saint paul is speaking about himself otherwise he never speak about himself if you read the uh, the letters of saint paul we don't see anywhere the miracles performed by saint paul but at the same time in the history we know saint paul performed many miracles but none of the miracles are written in his letters he never wrote any of his miracles that he performed in the letters but in the acts of the apostle you can see the miracles because acts of the apostles are written by saint luke but the letters are written by saint paul he did not write the miracles which he performed in the name of jesus because he never wanted those kind of fame and name but here in this passage he is speaking about his divine revelation why because there are people who are speaking against his authenticity and then saint paul says like this let us continue reading saint paul said i know that such a person whether in body or out of the body i do not know god knows verse 3 verse 4 let's continue was caught up in the paradise and heard things that are not to be told and no mortal is permitted to repeat see i went to heaven i went to the paradise and i heard the things which god wanted to teach me i was taught by jesus himself directly and i know knew the secret this secret treasures which are hidden in, in secret places it is revealed to me you know there is a prophecy in the word of god isaiah 45 verse 2 and 3 i will go before you i level the mountains and great and break in pieces the doors of bronze cut through the bars of iron i will give you the treasures of darkness riches hidden in secret places so that you may know that it's i the lord god of israel who calls you by your name that is the word of god i will give you the treasures hidden in secret places now saint paul got the treasures hidden in secret places he got and that is what saint paul is talking about let's continue reading second corinthians chapter chapter 7 let us read continue verse 4 verse 4 he's we read like this was okay verse 5 on behalf of such a one i will boast 
about him i will boast that means he is boasting about himself when he said i will boast because this is something special a special grace god has given me you may be accusing me you are blaming me you are attacking me but i know what god has done in my life i know where my wisdom comes from therefore i will boast but on my own behalf then after boasting suddenly he want he wants to know he wants to say not only about this good thing that happened in my life i am boasting i'm also boasting about my weaknesses suddenly he knew he is boasting too much therefore he is going to the other extreme and he is speaking about his weaknesses and that is something very special with saint paul he doesn't want to elate himself too much but at the same time when there was a necessary for him to boast about his gro- his glories but at the same time he humbled himself and he said on behalf of such a one i will boast but on my own behalf i will not boast except of my weaknesses what is that weakness verse 6 continue reading but if i wish to boast i will not be a fool for i will be speaking the truth see if i am boasting it is not just boasting but it is a truth i am taken to the heaven and i heard the word of god but i refrain from it so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me and now seventh verse seven we read like this even considering the exceptional character of the revelations therefore to keep me from being too elated a thorn was given me in the flesh a messenger of satan to torment me to keep me from being too elated my dear brothers and sisters now he is speaking about a weakness he has a very painful thing that he is going through and he said there is a messenger of satan is tormenting me this is a thorn in my flesh and he says continue verse eight. three times i appeal to the lord about this please take this away from me this thorn in my flesh is attacking me eating me up please take this away from me three times i cried in front of god then what did jesus say verse 9 but jesus said to me my grace is sufficient for you for power is made perfect in weakness and jesus did not remove this this thorn in his flesh the thorn in flesh was permitted in his body and he said jesus said my grace is sufficient for you for power is made perfect in weakness so i will boast all the more gladly of my weakness so that the power of christ may dwell in me so this is the background now what is this thorn in the flesh this is a big d- discussion and debate among the scholars many people are confused about it there are three choices there are three choices about the thorn in the flesh there are some people scholars who are with the opinion that there are three points three options of the thorn in the flesh the first group they speak about the thorn in the flesh means the enemies of saint paul who are speaking against him gossiping accusing attacking calling him murderers and you know conspiring against him continuously wherever he goes there are some people accusing him wherever he preaches the word of god there are some people are always at his enemy and then some and then same paul prayed god this is like a tormentation everywhere people are attacking me abu- abusing me hurting me it is a tormentation in my body please remove these tortures remove these enemies the adversaries who are working with against me remove them three times he prayed but god said i'm not going to remove them let them be there they will continue torturing you but my grace is sufficient for you this is one option this is what many scholars believed many scholars believe this is the thorn in the flesh because saint paul himself calls these people who are prophets the wrong uh, those of boast and speaking gossiping against them against saint paul he calls them the messengers of satan we read like this in the word of god second corinthians chapter 11 was 13 and 14 you know such boasters are false apostles deceitful workers disguising themselves as apostles of christ was 14 and no wonder even satan disguises himself as an angel of light 
So he is accusing those people who are gossiping against him and calling them a Satan. Now, this, in connection with this next chapter, he says, the messengers of Satan, he is attacking me, abusing me. It is there in my body, tormenting me. So this is what the connection many scholars found and they say, this messenger of Satan, the thorn in the flesh, is nothing but the adversaries of St. Paul. So this is the sec first option. On the first, uh, the, a group of people, scholars, they believed this is the thorn in the flesh. And the second group of people who believed, what is this thorn in the flesh? They said, it is a sexual temptation which he was facing. He was going through, in the flesh, there is a concupiscence or the tendency towards lust which he was trying to overcome which was a t sexual temptation which he was facing and therefore he was always worried about it and he cried to God and said Lord please remove this temptation from me because it is eating me up so this is what some group of people some scholars some theologians believed most probably this is what the Satan the messenger of Satan in his flesh because he used the word flesh but there is a contradiction because the same St. Paul who spoke about the body and the desire of the flesh as Satan, we read in the word of God, 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 5, when he speaks about husband and wife, he told the husbands and wives not to detach themselves from the physical union unless there is an agreement between them. We read like this, 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 5, do not deprive one another except perhaps by agreement for a set time to devote yourselves to prayer and then come together again so that Satan may not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Saint Paul says, husband cannot say, I, will, I, I don't want you to touch my body. Wife cannot say, I don't want you to touch my body because the husband has got authority on the wife's body. Wife has got authority on the husband's body. They are not separate. They are one and the same. Praise the Lord. So, St. Paul says, they should be one. Unless and until both of them agree with each other, they should not separate. They should not abstain from the physical relationship. So, this is what St. Paul says. Do not deprive one another except perhaps by agreement for a set time. Maybe certain time of sacrifice, penances, you can come together as both agree and then keep a distance from each other, uh, from physical attachment and focus on God. But at the same time, if these both don't agree and then don't uh, separate themselves from each other. So do not deprive one another except perhaps by agreement for set time to devote yourself to prayer, to focus on God. You can abstain from the physical relationship but after the time of set time of abstinence you should come together so that satan may not tempt you because of your lack of self-control if you don't come together and if one person is only selfish the other person is not interested or something like this there is a possibility that satan may tempt you and make you fall into the sin because of your lack of self-control here, the sexual, sexual, sexuality or sexual sin he committed, I mean, he is calling it as a work of the Satan. Not the sexuality, but sexual sin. Work of the Satan. And therefore, he says, be, be careful about falling into this self-control, lack of self-control. Praise the Lord. So, some theologians and scholars say, most probably, St. Paul was going through this temptation lustful temptation and that is what he's calling the thorn in the flesh but majority of the theologians scholars deny this why because they caught another word of god that is first corinthians chapter 7 verse 7 if you continue reading this we read like the okay verse chapter 7 verse 6 continue reading 7 6 this I say by way of concession and not of command. Okay, verse 7. I wish that all were as I as myself am. 
Saint Paul says, "I wish all of you should be unmarried because he is unmarried." He said, "I wish that all were as I myself I am, but each has a particular gift from God. One having one kind, another a different kind." So, what does it mean? Saint Paul want, wished that everyone should be bachelors or leading a celibate life. But he says, but if you don't have the gift of celibate life, don't enter into it. And he himself says, he has that gift. What does it mean? Since he has the gift of celibacy, celibacy and celibate life, he is comfortable with that. And therefore, this second option is denied by majority of the theologians. Praise the Lord. And now, the third option. What must be the thorn in the flesh? And this is the option majority of the theologians accepted. And especially the modern theologians, based on the word of God, they accepted this is the thorn in the flesh of St. Paul. And what is that? And that is nothing but a physical ailments he was suffering from. He was physically challenged. He was physically weak. What was his problem? In the first, in the first, one of the church fathers, Tertullian, he said Saint Paul was suffering from uh, head severe headache and earache. That is what Tertullian, one of the church fathers, said. He was suffering from severe migraine headache and uh, he, ear pain, and that was for all throughout his life he had this problem, and therefore many church fathers believed. This is the thorn in the flesh he was suffering from. And that is what he prayed in front of Jesus and said, Please, Jesus, if possible, please heal me. Three times he prayed, but Jesus said, Don't worry, let it be, but my grace is sufficient for you. My dear brothers and sisters, you know, all the sicknesses need not be healed. Many sicknesses may remain with you until your death because it will give you grace. It will give you strength. It will purify you. It will pre uh, prevent you from being too elated or exalted. So the Lord permits some people to go through some kind of sicknesses all throughout their life. Like St. Teresa of Avila, St. Teresa of Lisieux, St. Alphonsa and so many saints. They all suffered until their death. It was never been healed. They, those sicknesses would never be healed. Just like St. Paul had. Though he prayed, God said, no. My grace is sufficient for you. Therefore, just because you are not healed of any sickness doesn't mean God hates you. It is also a clear sign of God's special love for you. A special vocation God has given you. St. Alphonsa, all throughout her life, she was on bed. On, uh, she was bedridden. But God used her powerfully. St. Teresa of Lisieux, most of her time, lifetime, she was bedridden. But God used her powerfully and converted thousands of people through her. So this is how God works. We cannot bind the hands of God and say, Lord, don't do this like this. You do like this. Who are we to dictate terms to God? God will dictate. We will just obey. Praise the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. So some people believed he had this problem. But most of the people believed his Especially the modern theologians believed it is not about headache or earache, but it was about his eyesight. He had blindness. That is what majority of the people believed because we read some passages. Galatians chapter 4 verse 13 onwards we read like this. Galatians chapter 4 verse 13. He said, you know that it was because of a physical infirmity that I first announced the gospel to you. That means St. Paul himself speak about a physical infirmity. Physical in, he is physically challenged. He is not a perfect person. He is as, as the whole world calls, not a perfect person. But he had physical infirmity. And he said, I came to preach the gospel with a physical infirmity. So everyone in the Corinthians and everywhere, everybody knew he had a physical problem, physical infirmity. But we don't know what is that physical infirmity. But there is another clue which says, okay, let's read verse 14, 14 also. Though my condition put you to the test, you did not scorn or despise me, 
but welcome to me as an angel of god as christ jesus see though physically i was suffering there was a physical infirmity in me but still you did not deny me you did not did not put you put me into the test you did not scorn or despise me you did not shout at me you were not angry with me because you were you were struggling to take care of me but welcome dear as an angel of god as christ jesus himself you welcomed me he says to galatians though i had a physical infirmity and then we read was 15 then he says what has become of the good will you felt for i testify that had it been possible you would have torn out your eyes and given them to me see he is giving a clue what was that physical ailment he says you love me so much but if it was possible you would have give a pluck to your eyes and given to me what does it mean that means he had some eye problem his problem was connected to eyes therefore saint paul says since you know that my eyes are having problem if it was possible you would have plucked your eyes and given to me now from the bible passage themselves we come to know what was the problem of saint paul the thorn in the flesh that was his eyesight problem and which god permitted him when did he get this problem when did he get this problem we read from the bible acts of the apostle chapter 9 verse 8 acts of the apostle chapter 9 is 8 saul got up from the ground and though his eyes were open he could not see he could see nothing so they led him by a hand you know saul had a conversion story there was a tremendous light fell on him and because of this light he lost his eyesight once during his conversion time and people had to hold his hand and walk that means he he completely blinded if it was slight light or sl slight eyesight he would have walked alone but he could not walk alone he had he needed the help of someone else that means he lost his eyesight completely when did he get some eyesight back we read it was 18 chapter 9 was 18 after the baptism and immediately something like scales fell from his eyes and his sight was restored then he got up and was baptized so when he was converted his eyesight got back but he was it is believed that he did not get the eyesight fully there was a stain of this conversion all throughout his life a reminder for paul to remember what he has done some theologians say it is it is for him to pay the penance for what he has done in the past he committed murder many people he killed and he is asked to go through a small penance all throughout his life that is why he had to suffer with this eyesight problem for a long time until his death though he cried in front of god for healing jesus said don't worry about it my grace is sufficient for you that means when you go through this problem you are you are getting grace why grace because you are doing penances for your own sin you are doing penances for your own sins and you are getting my grace more and more therefore my grace is sufficient for you praise the lord that is why we read galatians chapter 6 verse 11 when saint paul was writing down he wrote like this galatians chapter 6 verse 11 you know even though he had problem with the eyesight he wrote so many letters imagine you know how did he write see what large letters i make when i am writing in my own hand why did he write large letters because he can't see properly and he says i'm writing it down with the large letters and most of the time he had somebody to write it down there is another passage says i am dictating my friend is writing down why because he can't see so from all these passages it is understood that saint paul was suffering from a kind of problem with the connected to eyesight and that is what he cried three times in front of jesus jesus please heal me then jesus said don't worry my child my grace is sufficient for you in your weakness my power will be revealed that is why when you say you know when we say all these letters letter to romans corinthians galatians ephesians and timothy all these letters are written by saint paul himself we will be shocked it's a power of god how this man who is bl blind 
or more, uh, most of the high sight is gone still he wrote all these letters that means the power of christ is manifested in him in his weakness the power of christ is manifested that is why jesus said my grace is sufficient for you don't worry my dear brothers and sisters all those who are going through suffering crises struggles don't worry the lord says my grace is sufficient for you first peter chapter 4 verse 12 first peter chapter 4 verse 12 we read like this beloved do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you as though something strange were happening to you when there is a crisis suffering crisis pain sickness don't be shocked don't be frightened surprised as if something strange is happening to you verse 13 we read like this but rejoice in so far as you are sharing christ suffering be happy that you are sharing christ suffering so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed if you are suffering now don't worry you are sharing in the christ suffering rejoice as if you are sharing in the sufferings of christ one day when the glory is revealed you will rejoice you will glad and shout for joy there is a reward for every suffering that you are going through every sickness that you are going through every physical infirmity that you are facing for every sickness that you are going through every crisis and pain that you are facing in your daily life there is a reward the lord wants to give you if you are ready to accept all this suffering as a sharing in christ suffering then the lord you will shout for joy when the glory is revealed we read matthew chapter 5 verse 11 Matthew chapter 5 verse 11 we read like this The word of God says blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely and on my account when people accuse you blame you attack you insult you gossip against you you are blessed don't go and do the same thing against them don't attack them back you are blessed your reward is kept in heaven Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Praise the Lord. 